stay frosty and head over to EZMutt.com for the cheapest mutt coins on the market. And when I say cheapest, I mean it. We're talking 100K for around 13 bucks. Use code DIRECTOR for 5% off. Yo, what up, brothers? It's the Director Chargers fans. Well, the preseason has come and gone. It had its highs. It had its lows. But more than anything, I think it really showed us uh, a good preview of the Chargers for the 2021 season. It also gave us a good idea of who the Chargers might be rocking with in their 53-man roster. Of course, we got here. I got a nice little set of uh, graphics to show you guys in, in uh, guiding you through my personal belief in what the Chargers are going to do in constructing their 53-man roster. And uh, I think some things will be surprising. You guys get a little sample size right here of Justin Herbert, Chase Daniel, and Easton Sick. The Chargers rostering three quarterbacks, you say? I say it's not impossible, especially with what we saw yesterday. We did see <laughs> Chase Daniel uh, maybe get a slight injury on his hand or something like that. So that actually might be put into consideration late into what they decide to do uh, in signing these guys to the final 53. So uh, I think it should be a good one today, guys. Of course, as we're going along in this video, please leave your comments, your thoughts, your beliefs, and what you think the Chargers are going to do uh, with these final cuts, with these final signings. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. It could be anything. It could be the Chargers need another free agent. It could be the Chargers should keep or cut so-and-so. So before we do get started, guys, as a reminder, we've got a giveaway going on right now. To celebrate the kickoff, we are giving away the signed Antonio Gates jersey to one of my lucky subscribers. All you guys got to do is hit the, uh, the link in the description follow the instructions there very very simple to enter and make sure you are subscribed only subs can win but of course we're not done we're giving one away to our awesome crew members as well as signed ladanian tomlinson jersey this one is awesome man this is a huge thank you to all my crew members you guys have been amazing all you got to do to enter for this one is be a member of my crew and that's it good luck to everybody in the giveaway and with that let's get into this before we do hit us up with a like and sub if you do enjoy this content small amount of time you guys take to hit the like sub and bell notification helps me out a lot let's get into this one lights camera action The Chargers' final 53-man roster prediction as per the director. Now, there's a lot of things I think could happen. Let's actually go over this quarterback position here real quick. Justin Herbert, Chase Daniel, and Easton Stick. Now, like I mentioned, Chase Daniel did suffer some sort of maybe minor injury on Sunday in their preseason game versus the Seattle Seahawks. That might actually weigh into the factor of keeping Easton Stick on the roster. Honestly, I think this has been a heated topic among Chargers fans. Easton Stick certainly has shown more edge, competitiveness, athleticism, the ability to keep uh, plays alive. And Chase Daniel has not looked so good this preseason. However, if you're just coming in now, you haven't heard my thoughts on Chase Daniel before. I do believe that the Chargers signed Chase Daniel in preparation to help Justin Herbert better grip and understand the Joe Lombardi offense of New Orleans. Of course, Chase Daniel playing in New Orleans. You definitely want to have somebody out there to help him you know interpret that offense at the same time though Easton Stick I do feel provides a more competitive advantage so that's why I'm going to say the Chargers maybe do roster three quarterbacks I'm kind of hoping for this again this is just kind of my take on the 53 so if you guys disagree please um, in any category leave your comments and thoughts in the comments section below now let's move on to running back this is one that certainly Chargers fans have been wondering about like who's going to make the roster of course you know the Austin Eckler and of course Larry Roundtree the rookie is going to make the roster but what about Justin Jackson what about Joshua Kelly and Darius Bradwell well let's take a look here and see what I decided on because of course you can only sign so many players to the 53 I decided on Austin Eckler Larry Roundtree Justin Jackson and of course Gabe Neighbors the fullback so maybe Gabe Neighbors doesn't count as in the halfback category. We had to get him on this list somewhere. Now, Austin Eckler, of course, is going to be your running back one. He's a, he's a lock to make the roster. Larry Roundtree has been absolutely fantastic this preseason. And between the other two running backs, Joshua Kelly and Darius Bradwell, I'm thinking, honestly, Joshua Kelly, every time I've seen him get an opportunity, it's been pretty not 
so great. <laughs> Underwhelming is the word I'm looking for. And Justin Jackson, although he does suffer from, you know, a checkered pass as far as injury, does show a lot of flash when he is on the field. Now, with Larry Roundtree in the mix, Larry might actually have the opportunity to climb up to running back too as a player that I didn't know whose role was going to be on this team when he was drafted. I felt the Chargers were good at running back. I was excited to see Joshua Kelly come back and maybe prove some people wrong. Unfortunately, that's not the way that things panned out. And I do think the Chargers do take a chance and keep Justin Jackson on this roster with Larry Roundtree uh, maybe fighting for that spot at running back too. He's been very, very impressive. As far as Joshua Kelly and Darius Bradwell, I would definitely see them as practice squad candidates, maybe guys that we call upon in a pinch, but at the same time, I'm not quite certain about their uh, security on the 53 at this point. So I decided to go with these three guys and the fullback in Gabe Neighbors. Next up, wide receiver. This was probably the most difficult position group for me to pan out because there was just so much talent on this team. And uh, I think we uh, kind of got a surprise and a look at what the cuts are going to look like when the team decided to part ways with Prol. You guys remember Prol? He was an awesome kick returner. He was an awesome special teamer. And uh, the Chargers decided to part ways with him. I do think in part way to injuries. But at the same time, there is some some talent out there. And honestly, I, I went with the guy, too, that I think is going to surprise you guys a little bit. Let's take a look at the wide receivers. I'm going to turn off my camera here for a second so you guys can see uh, who's behind me there. Now, of course, we got the top three and Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and Josh Palmer. For course, I forgot to take off the Tyree, <laughs> the Tyron Johnson photo put in Josh Palmer. But still, uh, we'll get into that in just a second. Behind them, I have Tyron Johnson, Jalen Guyton, and Michael Bandy. Michael Bandy. Who is Michael Bandy, director? Well, if you guys remember in the last couple of preseason games, Michael Bandy did get some looks at kick returner, a punt returner. He actually looked really, really nice out there. Additionally, he saw a pass yesterday in the slot that uh, he converted for a first down in a clutch situation. Kind of reminded people, I remember my chat saying this, kind of reminded people of a, a, a young, stocky uh, uh, Wes Welker, <laughs> if you can imagine that. The guy isn't huge, he's not big, but he's definitely scrappy enough. I actually said beforehand that he reminds me of, a, of an Austin Eckler kind of type. So I decided, you know, among the guys that we had out there, maybe it's time to cut ways with a Joe Reed and a, and a KJ Hill and look towards the future. I think the Chargers certainly need their two speedy wide receivers at Tyron Johnson and Jalen Guyton. Those guys have been fantastic. But Michael Bandy, I'm going to say, just barely squeaks into this roster because I do see some upside for him in the special teams. And I do see some upside of him. Uh, if he is called upon, I think he's definitely scrappy enough. He can get open. And um, I, I was pretty impressed with everything I saw in the preseason with him. Now, let's talk a little bit about Josh Palmer versus Tyron Johnson and Jalen Guyton. Okay. I would say the Chargers wide receiver three position is a little foggier than other teams in the NFL. Just due to the fact that the talent of the Chargers at the position group, right? The reason I have Josh Palmer listed at wide receiver three is because I think there's going to be a healthy mix of maybe two or three of these guys at the wide receiver three position based on circumstance, based on the situation. Josh Palmer has proven to be a very, very consistent chain mover, secure hands. I think he had one drop in the preseason. We all saw it yesterday, but that was a bad game altogether. But he also has the concentration to bring in balls. Let's say like the one that was uh, tipped off his fingertips. He was. It reminded me of that touchdown versus the Steelers with Keenan Allen. You guys remember that? It kind of it bounced off of Keenan Allen's hands, and he was able to track it in the air and then come down with it for the touchdown. Kind of reminded me of that, and that's very exciting to see out of your rookie wide receiver, right? So I believe that the Chargers may roll out a combination of Josh Palmer, Tyron Johnson, maybe even Jalen Guyton at the wide receiver three position. But I do think Josh Palmer has earned a lot more touches this season than we had previously thought going into the year. This Chargers uh, rookie class has looked absolutely spectacular and they're continuing to impress even as we're going into the season. So Josh Palmer, very excited for him. Of course, Tyron Johnson, Jalen Guyton are certainly going to be contributors as well. Take a look at the tight end position here real quick. I'm actually just going to turn that on right here. Jared Cook, Donald Parham, Trey McKitty, and Stefan Anderson. Now, this is one that also was pretty difficult for me. If it's difficult for me, just kind of like throwing names on paper, I can't imagine what it's like for the coaching staff. But I think the biggest surprise here is that we're rostering four tight ends in this prediction, at least. Just because Stefan Anderson, whenever I've seen him on the field, whenever the circumstance calls for him to play, he's been very impressive, not just in the preseason, but last season as well. So I decided I think the Chargers should make room for Stefan Anderson to stay on this roster. Of course, they're not going to cut 
Trey McKitty or Donald Parham. Those guys are fantastic. Of course, Trey McKitty, the rookie. And they just signed Jared Cook, who should be a pretty fantastic receiving option for Justin Herbert and the Chargers this season. But yes, I didn't want to make room for Stefan Anderson on this roster just because I think the talent is there and it'd be a shame to lose that for no reason. <laughs> Next up, now I'll turn the camera back on. Next up, let's talk a little bit about the offensive line, the most improved unit on this team by far, something that Chargers fans should be optimistic about, even given the poor performance of the backups in the past couple of games. Let's take a look at the offensive line. Now, we'll go from left to right, right? The starters are what's really going to shine here. This is where the Chargers need all the luck in the world, right? Stay healthy, please, every single one of you guys. Because the Chargers, at this point, may be in a fragile state when it comes to the offensive line. If one guy goes down, we do have a little bit of flexibility, but the quality will certainly go down drastically if somebody were to suffer an injury. So knock on wood, every single one of you in the comments section, we need to hope and pray that the Chargers are lucky in that area. Now the top five, we all know this. Rashawn Slater, Matt Filer, Corey Lindsley, Adea Bucci, and Brian Bulaga. All these guys, absolutely fantastic. You could maybe argue that Odea Bushi and Brandon Hymas are in a position battle right now. Brandon Hymas has been absolutely fantastic in the preseason and in camp. So the top five guys, you don't have to worry about that. Those guys are going to be absolutely fine. As far as the depth, now this is where we saw a lot of problems for the Chargers in the preseason. It seemed like every single time there was a snap without the name of Rashawn Slater. Rashawn Slater only played a couple of drives in the first game. When he was in the game, it was a stark difference in protection, right? Coming from your blind side, that guy was getting the job done. He looks like the real deal. When he was not in the game, and you enter a Trey Pipkins, the game absolutely skewed in the other direction. Pressure after pressure, sack after sack, missed assignment after missed assignment, things looked really, really, really bad. So I'll start by talking a little bit about Trey Pipkins, why I have Trey Pipkins slash FA on there, which FA stands for free agent. I think the Chargers would be wise to at least consider looking for an alternative to the backup tackle position. Make it even better. Go find yourself a nice backup swing tackle that can play left or right and really put our minds at ease as fans that Justin Herbert will be protected under all circumstances. Okay, Trey Pipkins just was not getting it done. And it hurts me to say it because I've been really hoping that he could develop into a solid swing tackle, into a solid backup option. But from what I saw in the preseason and in camp, I do not think Trey Pipkins should stay on this roster. I think Trey Pipkins would be a liability if he were ever called upon in a live game in the actual season. We saw a lot of this last year. We don't want to see any more of it this year. And I'm sorry to say, Trey Pipkins, I think the Chargers should look for a different option at tackle. Okay, who else is out there? Who knows? I've got guys out there in the comments section saying, oh, we should go after Rick Wagner. Maybe there's a guy that we can trade for. Either way, I'm of the belief that the Chargers should look for a different option at tackle. As for the other backups, Brendan Hymas has been absolutely fantastic. I honestly think he could start over Ode Abushi, but it's kind of up to the staff there. Scott Questenberry is a solid uh, uh, center backup. And then Storm Norton has certainly struggled as well. That's where I think the Chargers signing a backup swing tackle behind Rashawn Slater could also benefit them on the right side, just in case Brian Bulaga and his checkered injury past does cause problems this year as well. Now, one more hypothetical, just in case... You know, you guys need to have your minds put at ease just a little bit more. If something were to happen to Brian Bulaga, I want to let you guys know that the backup right tackle at this point for me would be Matt Filer, who is our starting left guard. And in his place at left guard, Brendan Hymas would take his spot. And I still do think the offensive line would look pretty solid. You guys remember Matt Filer of the Steelers? He did play right tackle and guard, and he was pretty great at both positions. So I would say the actual backup instead of Storm Norton would be Matt Filer, and then Storm would actually be a deeper backup on this roster. Okay? So with the offense out of the way, let me know what your guys' thoughts are on the depth and what I'm looking at as far as the top 53. One more look right there. I'll actually turn off my camera one more time. Do you guys agree or disagree with any of the decisions I have made here as far as my predictions for the starting 53? Let me know. Now let's get into the defense. The defense. Now again, another very, very tough thing to kind of look at and say, who do we keep and who do we cut? Because we saw a lot of really good performances on the defense. I think the offense certainly struggled, and I think that was mainly due to the fact of a Chase Daniel. But the defense, they really showed us some stuff. I would certainly say at the defensive tackle position, at the defensive line position, we saw a lot of quality guys in there fighting for a spot. And here you guys will see my, my top six guys that we had to whittle it down to. Okay, of course, you got your top three in Jerry Tillery, Linval Joseph, and Justin Jones. But behind him, 
I think the guys that have earned a roster spot to play behind these guys, Braden Fayoko has been absolutely fantastic. He's very versatile. He gets through There's a lot of interior pressure. I'm excited to see what he has to bring to the table. I think we bring the Hawka man into the lineup for sure. Christian Covington is certainly a no-brainer. He's been fantastic. And then Forrest Merrill. Forrest Merrill has certainly stood out for this team as well during the preseason. I say he's a certain keep on this team, okay? So cut and dry, very simple. That's your defensive line. Let me know what you guys think. There's a lot of other guys out there like Yardbury, Broughton, certainly could compete for a spot there too, but I'm thinking maybe practice squad for them. And the Chargers have like a really nice uh, rounded uh, thing of depth here for the defensive line, interior defensive line, I should say. Next up is the edge position. Now this is where things got a little bit tough. We'll turn off the camera again so you guys can see on that side. This is where things got a little bit tough. We had some guys out there. Lemonier, Lemonier, I think. <laughs> uh, we had uh, um, Egg Bull, Egg Boulet. And those guys I think are pretty good. I think on a lot of other teams, any other team in the NFL, they would certainly ha warrant a backup position, right? But the Chargers, I feel like their cup overfloweth when it comes to quality edge players. And Joey Bosa, Ochana uh, Nwosu, Kyler Fackrell, and Chris Rumpf. All these guys have been really, really good in the preseason. And I just think there's too many cooks in the kitchen at this point. I do not know if there is room for a Lemonier or an Egg Boulet. <laughs> I feel like Chef Boyardee. <laughs> at the same time, though, man, the Chargers look really, really solid up front at this point. All the starters look great. I'm pretty confident as far as the uh, rotational and, and depth players as well. I think the Chargers are trending in the right direction. So you guys see that? Turning the camera back on. Now let's talk a little bit about linebacker. Again, another position where there's a lot of decent depth, right? We got Drew Tranquil, Kenneth Murray, and Kezier White. All these guys are going to be fantastic in the season. We've seen so many big plays from White. He's certainly been turning heads at camp. Kenneth Murray's a no-brainer. He could certainly be one of the best linebackers in the league and start making that statement this year. And the return of Drew Tranquil, who made a lot of plays in the preseason as well. Those guys are all a lock. Who plays behind him, right? We had a lot of guys behind him. We had Christensen, number 50. We had, I think, Ryan Smith. Not Ryan Smith. I forget his name. The other guy behind him, too. We had a lot of guys trying to fight for a spot, including Nick Neiman, who's a rookie, and he's been looking fantastic in the preseason, and Amin Ogbong Bemega. I think the Chargers really like Amon. I think Amon has a lot of work to do in the coverage uh, area of his uh, of his game a little bit, but he certainly looked to be really, really good in the run defense. So I think they might they might be modeling his development after a Kenneth Murray, right? Kenneth Murray, not so great in coverage, but really good against the run. They were able to take Kenneth Murray and mold him into the kind of player that they wanted, right? And I feel like maybe Amon is probably going to be the next project in that category. So the Chargers linebackers look stupid, stupid good. Very confident in their ability to perform. Next up, the cornerbacks. Probably another surprise on this one. <laughs> the cornerbacks, definitely a unit that I was most worried about before getting into the season. Might still be a little bit worried now. But as far as the starters are concerned, and Michael Davis, Sante Samuel Jr., and Chris Harris Jr., we were looking pretty good. Chris Harris, of course, is going to do what he does. He's great. Sante Samuel has been nothing but spectacular in the preseason. And Michael Davis is Michael Davis. He's looking pretty good, man. He's going to be the guy, our secret weapon against all these speedsters for going up in the league. Now, Michael Davis probably still has some work to do in his development, but he's certainly a better option than a lot of other teams' cornerback, too. Okay? Now, as for the depth, this is where things do get interesting. Trevon Campbell and John Brannon. That's who I got. I think the Chargers at this point, what, that's five cornerbacks? You got to make cuts sometimes, man. And I think the biggest name people are surprised not to see on this list is is certainly Brendan Faison. Faison yesterday in the game versus the Seattle Seahawks looked absolutely dreadful. Okay? And I hate to say it because Faison does have the uh, physical measurables that you're looking for in a cornerback. He's tall and fast. He just, uh, he got, <laughs> he got exposed a lot on Sunday. And it hurts me to say because, again, I would love to see all these guys stay on the team. But I think Trevon Campbell has made enough plays to make the roster. Then John Brennan, the man who has the most turnovers interceptions in practice and in the preseason i think he's going to get a shot there as well as a depth piece for the chargers let me know what you guys think this is the one where i'm actually asking you guys please give me your insight on the cornerbacks um this one was kind of tough for me I, I thought about it and i thought about it and i'm still not sure if this would be the right decision so let me know what you guys think about the depth at the cornerback position okay lastly the safeties for uh then we'll close out with the special teams at safety pretty cut and dry 
Nasir Adderley, Derwin James, those are your starters. Mark Webb, he looked up and down in the preseason. Sometimes really good. Sometimes he's missing tackles and stuff like that. But I think he's certainly a, a decent backup free safety. As for Alohi Gilman, I've seen a lot of growth in him, actually. A lot of big plays that could have gone for big plays. Alohi was there to put a stop to it. And so far, I'm very impressed with Alohi Gilman. And I hope his development continues. He's the kind of guy that you could see playing in the box a little bit this season as well. Uh, in combination with Derwin James. But still, the top two safeties on this team right now, and Nasir Adderley and Derwin James, should feel very, very, very confident. And the return of Derwin James is going to be beyond description on his impact this season. All right? So there's your Chargers defense. Now, lastly, we got to talk a little bit about the special teams. And again, this is one that Chargers fans have talked a lot about this offseason. Who's going to be kicker? I think is the biggest one. Let's go ahead and roll the tape. Actually, let's go ahead and get rid of this first. <laughs> the special teams. At kicker, the winner of the kicker battle between uh, Badgley, Vizcaino, and Kessman, I think might be Michael Badgley. Honestly, we saw Vizcaino get in there yesterday. I think it was a 36-yard attempt, and he missed it. And that's very concerning. Michael Badgley, on the other hand, did hit a 50-yarder two weeks ago, and that does say that maybe he's figuring stuff out. Maybe he needed the competition to really focus in. The biggest thing I'm worried about in cutting a Michael Badgley, and I think it's probably a silly reason, but it's still a reason for me, is that the Chargers have had two really good kickers on their roster in the past they decided to let go. Josh Lambeau had a pretty decent start with the Chargers. Chargers decided to part ways with him. He has a pretty good career in Jacksonville. Then, of course, all Chargers fans know the name of Young Way Koo, who certainly had his ups and downs with the Chargers, but when he went to the Atlanta Falcons, he was the best kicker in the league last season. I don't know if I want to repeat that uh, that narrative with the Chargers. Maybe Michael Badgley has something in there. We can all hope. But this certainly would be the last stand for me. <laughs> if it does not pan out in 2021, I certainly hope the Chargers make an early decision and bring in somebody else. But as of right now, at least in my eyes, Michael Badgley has won the kicking battle for 2021. As for punter, Ty Long, same guy. They had somebody else in there. I think Lachlan or something before he already got cut. And as for uh, long snapper, for the first time in a long time, uh, the Chargers moved on from Cole Maza. We got Matt Overton in there now. Old veteran. <laughs> like 35 or something like that. He's played all over the league. And uh, uh, Maza looks like he had he suffered an injury. The Chargers brought in Overton. I'm just expecting the Overton to be the starting long snapper for the team. And that's going to do it, guys. That is my prediction for... Our 53-man roster, the actual announcement should be made on Tuesday of who the who actually makes the team. So we will be doing a reaction video to that together on Tuesday. Who's making the 53 for the Chargers? Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. This was my interpretation of what I think and what I saw in the offseason and in, in preseason. Let me know what you guys think as far as who makes the team in the next couple of days. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you did enjoy this content, hit us up with a like and sub on your way out. Make sure to enter for that and signed Antonio Gates and uh, Ladanian Tomlinson jersey. It's a giveaway of goats this uh, this month as we celebrate kickoff. And it should be a good one as we move into the actual uh, season, guys. The get ready for the Chargers versus Washington football team. It should be a very good one. We should see a lot of Chargers fans out here hollering and screaming. It'll be a good time. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been The Director. We'll see you next time. And as always, bolt up and stay frosty.